Let me be seated in Jesus' name. We're thanking God, uh, our praise team and our music ministry and all of those of you that are viewing us now by Facebook Live. Uh, take this time, if you will, share us on your page. Others can get blessed uh, with that in Jesus' name. Those you're on Coffee's Call, we are, are counted an honor for you to share this time with us that the blessing of God can move and flow in the midst of us here in the house. Mm -hmm. And those of you that are connecting with us and are looking in on this maybe even later on social media, the anointing of God is alive and it's on his word. Amen. Amen. And as we share his word, read his word, receive his word, believe his word, then the power of the efficacious word of God works in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into the lesson for this morning. And I want to um, share with you a couple of points. Uh, let me see where can I put this. Uh, just share with you a couple of points. Uh, number one, I want you to understand and appreciate that uh, uh, I believe our assignment over this next little bit of time, weeks, however long, Holy Spirit keeps us there, is to uh, teach and share, preach the word of God. Amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, because even as we see in the example of Jesus, uh, his preaching and teaching uh, uh, also uh, was followed by healing, signs, wonders, miracles. Amen. Amen. And uh, I've taught you, and I believe uh, all of us here recognize that the Bible is the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. And therefore, it, uh, it is the final authority. God's yeah. Word has the final say so yeah. about any and everything that goes on in our lives and in this world, even around us. So then, uh, just before I get into the lesson for today, uh, again, I'm just trying to see where I can fit this, but just before I get into the lesson for today, you all saw the excellent uh, funeral presentation? Yeah. Yeah. Ten, was it 10 hours, 9 hours, <laughs> 24 hours? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And everybody who stood up here act like they were the only person that was going to talk all day long. But... I, I'm, I'm just challenged, encouraged, I'm, I'm driven to call your attention to the eulogy sermon of Dr. Jasper Williams, Jr. Uh, I mean, the boy just laid it on out there. Huh? And if you didn't get to see it here, it's on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Now you got to step through all of the, oh, there was such a controversial, uh, the, you know, this negative message out of the pulpit against black women. Ah, rah, rah, rah. Boy, but once you get through all of that, listen to the message. I said, listen to the message. One person even said, wow. Yeah, you got your statistics wrong. So something must be wrong with you. This man is 70-something. And he's been preaching. He preached uh, Aretha's father's funeral 30, what, four years ago on that very same day or close to that same day. So the man knows preaching. He knows statistics. And anybody who wants to find out information can look the statistics up and find out that he was correct when he said 70% of homes in the black community are headed by single women. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Now, oh, all right. No, wait a minute. That's a fact of the matter. Mm -hmm. And if we want to get something done, we need to deal with the fact of the matter. Yeah. And then, in the midst of all of his hooping, <laughs> he said what I said several weeks ago. I mean, he didn't say it because I said it. He said it because it's true. And I said it because it's true. And the truth is, in our black community, oh, I don't know if I hit that on purpose, 
In our community, we need to have our families get ourselves together. Period. It's not about who out there, not about way over there, not about around the corner. It's right in our house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our houses. And uh, I just uh, encourage you, not from political, not from this, not, just listen to the message. Mm -hmm. Believe it, receive it, and then do your part. He said, he says things like, you know, we need mentors. Mm -hmm. We need uh, 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 people that can relate to these families and and then I, I mean, I just wanted to go back to this one thing to support. Uh, people want to try to make something out of it. But it, 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 a, a single woman shouldn't have to. I'm going to say it like this. He said can. I'm going to say a single woman should not have to raise a boy. Because she can't raise him to be a man. A boy needs a man. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. To raise him to be a man. Yeah. Now, yeah, others have done wonderful, marvelous things, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. And when we get to being the way we're supposed to be and things are supposed to be, then we'll stop having results where I, I it ended up about over half a million black people have been killed by other black people and or will be if things keep going like they are. Mm -hmm. And can't nobody stop that but us. All right, what a way to start a message. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. So our lesson for today is entitled The E-Word School for healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the introduction statement, I said school, meaning instruction, for healing is open at STC. I, I, and I tried to figure out to say that we're having open enrollment. <laughs> uh, I tried to say that we're having uh, uh, school days, so come school days, school days. But it boiled down to School for Healing at STC is open for business. Yeah. And as of today, our School for Healing is available so that when we, next introduction statement, come, learn, and rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. That's what this school is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, getting around to how we how we got to this place in the first place is that uh, spending time reading the Word of God, personal relationship, dealing with uh, other interactions, I found and noted that when we believe God's Word and put it into action, since God's word is the truth, then every time we put God's word into action, we will have the truth manifest in our lives. Uh, one of the big deals about uh, all of this is we need, as I've said before, uh, decisions in our own thinking processes where we absolutely, positively, completely, without any reservation or hesitation, believe that God's word is truth to us. And then we do everything possible, as we said in last, the other week, about putting into action, doing whatever it takes in order to have that word come to pass in our lives and have that word come out of our mouth into whatever situation that we're dealing with. Okay, and so in the typical Pastor Scott form of how we do classes here at Salvation Temple Church, classes even on Sunday morning, 
of uh, three particular words for this particular message, this particular school class today, <laughs> starting with the word school. Uh, uh, and I was just fascinated. Uh, those of you who look up Webster's 1828, you ought to look it up because there's a whole lot of definitions for the word school. I mean, there's seven uh, as uh, one form and uh, two or three more in another form just for the one word, school. Mm -hmm. So when we say school here, school for healing here, we're talking about one, a place or house in which persons are instructed. Now then it goes on to say in arts, science, languages, or any species of learning, or the pupils assembled for instruction. Now, one thing I want to point out in this definition, it says that school can be a place, or what, say how? House. 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 And in uh, Dr. Williams's message, he pointed out there's a very clear difference between house and yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to press this one strong point right here. At your home, what kind of instruction is going on? You got pupils there. And if you don't have any, look in the mirror. You the pupil. <laughs> and look into your own pupils. And ask yourself the question, what kind of instruction, what kind of information is going on for learning in my house, in my home. And down to the minimum makeup, my point in this part of the lesson is that there should be some learning going on in your home every day as it relates to the Word of God. Amen. Every day. Say out loud every day. Every day there should be some learning there should be some instruction going on in homes, in your house, in your home, in order to receive the healing that comes from God. Yeah. The second definition from Webster's 1828 reads, the instruction or exercises of a collection of pupils or students or the collective body of pupils while engaged in their studies. Well, I'm telling you, school for healing is open here. Mm -hmm. So now you are a pupil. Say out loud, I was a pupil. I was a pupil. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then number three definition says that school is the state of instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Thompson did the prayer this morning, and I think I heard him pray. Uh, thank you, Father, something to the effect that the Word of God is taught clearly here at Salvation Amen. 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 And when the Word is taught clear, then people have an opportunity to receive that Word, mm -hmm. go and study up some more on that Word. Now, here's the word I need a lot of big amen. Mm -hmm. Go, I need some big amen. Go and study up some more mm -hmm. on that yeah. same Word. Amen. 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 <laughs> and not just have it be a Sunday morning deal. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the, the youth are upstairs. How many students go to school one day a week for two hours? <laughs> not many. Every day they go, you know, Monday through Friday. In some, in some places they got a little different adjustment. But they go to school every day. Mm -hmm. You know, five days a week at, at a minute. Huh? So then, so then, since we are in the school for healing here at Salvation Temple Church, we should have an attitude of dealing with the instruction from God's word every day. Amen. 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 And when you do that, uh, I don't care how you feel, I don't care what's going on, I don't care what you see on TV, when you will study and be a student of God's word every day, receiving it, believing it, putting it into action, 
healing comes to pass in your life. Amen. You will be healed. Amen. Mm -hmm. You may still have a fever. You may still have situation issues going on in your body. But God's word said that when you receive this word and say this word and believe this word in the name of Jesus, healing happens. You are healed. One of the biggest struggles in the minds of people is that most of the time, too often, people are more attentive to how they feel, what they see, what they heard other people say, instead of deciding that God's word is true. And when I ask him to heal me according to his word, and I believe that his word is true, and I receive his word, and put his word into action, healing happens. Yes. Yes. I am healed. Amen. Now, well, what do you mean I'm healed? Well, the definition in Webster's for heal is to be whole or entire all. Mm -hmm. To be whole or entire. Uh, some, sometimes we use the expression, uh, nothing missing, nothing broken, okay? So to heal, then it goes on with one other definition, says to cure of a disease or wound and restore to soundness or to that state of body in which the natural functions are regularly performed as to meaning heal the sick. Now, in this school here at Salvation Temple Church, in this school for healing, our position is that we believe that when students come, say I'm a student, when students come receive the instruction from the word of God and believe the truth of God's word, not the issues of feelings or whatever being said or done by other people, then healing comes to that. Yeah. Amen. 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 Healing, that word in Webster, means curing, restoring to a sound state. Tending to cure, mild, mollifying, the act of covering. Yeah. <laughs> I boldly declare to you today, in Jesus' name, that as people come, mm -hmm. pupils, students, come to STC's <laughs> School for Healing, they will receive healing. Amen. Amen. And that includes you. Amen. 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 I said amen. 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 Uh, just one of the things that I don't have on the on the on the on the outline is that I want to challenge you that even if you have circumstances or situations or issues going on physically in your body right now and you don't feel like you are in a sound state or if you don't feel like or think about that you've been cured my direction my instruction to you is to tell you to go into the school book manual, mm -hmm. the Word of God, and listen to me closely, stay in there. Amen. 
keep reading it, keep saying it, keep thinking about it, and I believe, listen, that the healing that you already have, that you already have, will become a reality in your thinking process, in your spirit process, in your heart and emotion process, and if you couldn't walk before, you get up and walk. If you couldn't raise your arm or whatever before, you'll be able to do that. If your heart wasn't working right, according to the x-rays or whatever, ever, it, listen, it will start to work right. Because healing happens when we believe, trust, receive, act on God's word, and don't let anything else, it may come. Another pain may come. You might fall out in the middle of the floor. You might have whatever. Don't allow that to change your belief in the truth that comes from God's word. Say out loud, your pastor's kind of excited today. That's it, that's not unusual. <laughs> Now, I want to go through some main text scriptures here, especially relating to this business about instruction. And when I, as your teacher pastor, come into the classroom of the Sunday morning service, and I'm looking forward to somehow God helping us have opportunities for people to come in for healing school, school for healing, on a regular basis, even if daily. And we need it more than once a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I check on my my my, uh, my 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 doctor chart. We got this uh, Henry Ford my chart thing it shows all the stuff yeah. that's going on in my medical history. That back for years, years back, and I can look on there and see stuff. I just went and did an EKG, and I looked on there. Uh, and did it yesterday or the day before. I looked on there. It's on there right there. It's on there right now. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's things they told me you should do this and that. And then he said, well, then you do. Back you did this and a long time ago you did that. And uh, bottom line is, hey, why is it so easy for us to take that pill every day at a certain time because the doctor says so? And then we have struggle and scuffle about reading God's word every day at the same time. Oh, the phone ring. Oh, the child got to do something. Oh, this got to do that. Oh, I can't, I don't have enough time right now. Oh, no, no. Well, wait, 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 wait. More than once. Because <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, what's that word? Not, con not conformity. When I don't do what I'm supposed to do. In compliance. Non-compliance. Non non my doctor tells me so many, you just non-compliant. <laughs> I mean, one time she told my wife, because something was going on, and my doctor said, well, we got to cast that out. Oh. <laughs> Him not doing what he's supposed to do with self-medicating and all that. <laughs> and one time she told me, said, either you do what I tell you to do, or you just go ahead and die. That's what my doctor said. Well, you say amen, because she said amen, amen, amen. amen. I said, say amen, because amen. I'm getting ready to tell you. Ha! <laughs> Huh? <laughs> if you don't read this word mm -hmm. and believe this word yeah. and do this word yeah. and talk the word of God, yeah. the enemy gonna try to kill you. Yeah. And you won't be able to come in here and sit up on the chair and look all cute. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna lay you out. We're not going to change it to three, four different outfits like that. <laughs> Lord, 
I'll tell you, they laid it out, didn't they? Yeah. One day it was red, the next yeah. day it was blue, and then it was white, and 4,200 pink Cadillacs, and yeah. white Cadillacs, and it, hey, listen, listen. This is a matter, really it is, of life and death. When the voice of God tells you or me, don't put that in your mouth. It'll kill you. Oh, well, but you, you understand. Hmm? My challenge here is to press us to the place where we recognize that it is up to us, say me out loud, me, me. me. to do what I'm supposed to do in order to have the life that God wants me to have. Amen. 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 It's not up to God. Huh? To make us be and do something we don't want to be and that we don't want to do. Say out loud, it's not up to God. Say it's up to me. Say this is true. God does want me well. Therefore, say this. Therefore, I have to want me well. I have to want me well. So in Proverbs, Chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, uh, and this is for you, Herman. Proverbs chapter 1, <laughs> verse 8 and 9, here's these words. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Amen. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head. Not earrings. <laughs> Not chains. You know, we got this bling bling thing, big old chain thing. Huh? It shall be an ornament of what? Grace. Say it stronger. An ornament of what? Grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. It is grace is God doing in us for us, around us, mm -hmm. those things that we cannot do for ourselves, yeah. Yeah. God's grace yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He can get money to you yeah. 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 when it looks like nobody else got money. Yeah. Yeah. He can have your light stay on, yeah. come on now, yeah. or come back on. Yeah. <laughs> When everybody else's lights go out. Yeah, yeah. We had some light coming on and going off over here yesterday yeah. when the storm was blah, 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 blah. Huh? And then back in the Old Testament, there's a time where down in a place called Goshen, uh, Egypt, when they're, they were having trouble about all of that. And, and God made, made all of Egypt dark. Yeah. Except for Goshen. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the whole country was absolutely black, mm -hmm. except for this one space place that God said, I'm going to have light right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you'll have an attitude that God's light shines in my house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. man, and say God's light yeah. shines in my house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No matter the darkness yeah. down the street, yeah. no matter the darkness of the folks sitting across the street, Looking, watching, seeing when you come and when you go. God's light shines in my house. Huh? Because of his grace. The grace comes because of hearing, receiving, paying attention to, putting into action the instruction of Father God. That's what makes light shine. Okay, so then. Uh, support texts are found in first one in the Gospel according to John. Chapter 17. Verse number 17. Now here's the tough. And here's the main point, y'all. Here's the whole deal in a nutshell. In the Gospel according to John, chapter 17, verse number 17. Here is Jesus speaking, and he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
Uh, so I'll say it like this. God's word is truth. There are, listen, there are forces, situations, issues, there are conditions that pressurize us to make us draw back on, to make us have doubts about God's word being true. Mm -hmm. And this where the rubber meets the road is, is the absolute most powerful place that we want our lives to be. We want our lives to be at the place where we accept without any hesitation, without any reservation. And if hesitation comes up, if reservation comes up, we still get back to receiving the fact that God's word is true. Amen. And God's word is the truth. Yeah. If there, let me say what, yeah. If there's any unsoundness remaining in you, it's connected to some hesitation on the truth of God's word. Yeah. You say, wow, Pastor, you're pushing it kind of hard. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, when you check out yourself, body, mind, relationships, or whatever, and if you find anything in any of those areas that's not like it's supposed to be, the way you handle that is you take the word of truth, and you, you read it, you receive it. Yeah, when I read it last year, oh, oh, oh. no wonder things are a mess. That was the last time you read something. But you take that word of truth and you, I'll just say, lift it up and say or speak that word of truth to whatever that area is and tell it to be whole. Mm -hmm. Tell it to be healed. Yeah. Tell it to go. Mm -hmm. Tell it to come. Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation is, mm -hmm. by the power of God's yeah. word, yeah. you will change it. Amen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, God's going to change it. No, you will change it. Wait a minute. Holy Spirit will change. No, you will change it. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. You say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. How come you how come you talking like that about uh, uh, I, I, I will? Isn't God supposed to do thus and so? Doesn't God help those who help themselves? No. God helps those who do what his word has to say. And when his word tells us to speak to the mountain, then we, 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 we do that. I said we do that. Amen. 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 We speak to the mountain. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Now listen closely because a lot of people miss it here. We don't speak to, he doesn't tell us to speak to God about the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. He said speak to the mountain. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but God, you know, and God, I need you to come on by here, Lord, and I need you to make a way. That's not what he said. He didn't say pray to him about the mountain. He said speak to the mountain or whatever needs to move. You speak to it. Say out loud, I will speak to it. I will speak to it. Okay. Then, then, uh, 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 here's how in the next scripture Hebrews chapter 2 here's how we can have the audacity to actually believe that if my arm wasn't working right that when I speak to that arm it's going to work right Amen. in the school for healing at Salvation Temple Church we're going to be teaching people 
that if your arm is not working right, say arm in the name of Jesus, yeah. work right, yeah. and it's going to work. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right here, Amen. in this place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, how can you be so bold about that? Because yeah. in Hebrews chapter 2, mm -hmm. at verse number 3, it reads, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 says, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders, with divers miracles and mm -hmm. gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Mm -hmm. That's how we can be bold mm -hmm. to believe that healing happens when we teach the lessons People receive it, people meditate on it, people believe it, people say it, people put it into action. Healing happens. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. well, well, how can you do that? Well, at the first part of verse number three, it says, how shall we escape if we neglect? What's those next, next three words? So, so, so great, great salvation. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all say, you know you say? We, we were singing a little while ago. You know you say? Yeah. Okay. In the same way you got saved or know you you are saved in the same way that's how you get healed. And that's how you know you're healed. Amen. What? No, Pastor. Salvation deals with sins. Uh, 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 uh. Sickness has to be dealt with something else. No. Jesus didn't die just for salvation. Amen. Amen. Uh oh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There was a whole lot more mm -hmm. in everything that went on in Jesus' life, the the teaching, the 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 the, the skirt, the beating, the hanging on the cross, mm -hmm. the burying in the grave. Amen and the resurrection, all of that was for a whole lot more Amen. than just salvation. Yeah. Hey, salvation is great. Amen. Come on now. I said salvation is great. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, in the same way, in the same process, healing happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus just like salvation did. Amen. Oh, Amen. oh. Okay, so I'll just say it like this. Salvation and healing happened at the same time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Salvation, healing, your prosperity yes. happened at the same time. Amen. Salvation, healing, your prosperity, and good relationship with people happened at the yes. same time. Yes. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. yeah, but Pastor, I've been dealing with this hmm. other person. You just don't know how long I've been putting my, you don't know how much we've been going through. I mean, we've been in and out and up and down and back and forth. Hmm? <laughs> Salvation, healing, prosperity, mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. joy. Wisdom, yeah. truth, mm -hmm. understanding, yeah. power, yeah. peace, yeah. all happen yeah. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor, what do I do when those things are out of place? Well, what do you do when those Speak things are out of place? Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. I keep trying. Wait, wait, I keep. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did you say? Well, speak the word. When those, who, who said it? Go, oh hey, I see you doing it again. This, I tried to pay you all last week. But, <laughs> she said, go to her. Because that's where the truth is. That's where the power is. And when you take that truth and then speak it to that situation, mm -hmm. then the situation got to change. Amen. It's just got to change. That's all there is to it. Say amen. amen. I said say amen. amen. It's got to change. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah. I said, do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Said, okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Now we now we now let's go to the the next and last 
Um, well, let's do, let's stay back to verse four, I'm sorry. Let's go back to verse four to just do this one point right here. God also bearing them witness, both. Those who heard God's word and went to do God's word and put God's word in action and received instruction, those people, God bore them witness both with signs and wonders and, you know, signs and wonders is one, and with diver, divers, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost. And the last three words, or the last little section of that verse said, according to his own will. Now watch this closely. What that means in essence is this. And listen, it sounds a little bit contradictory. But regardless of how you feel about it, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Listen, regardless, listen, of what you do about it, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Because when it is God's will, then that's the way it is. Amen. And so the important thing for us to do is to agree with his will. Yeah. And do what his will tells us to do. Here's this last section of scripture. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verse number 17 through 20. Verses number 17 through verse 20. It reads like this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Did anybody catch that key right there? <laughs> in my name shall the, in my name shall they cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. Mm -hmm. And if they drink any deadly thing, mm -hmm. now people want to make a big deal about somebody running up the flint, oh, we're going to give them, we're going to give them hell up in flint. Well, we need to give them some word up in Flint. Oh, see, oh, 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 but pastor, the governor and the people, and, and, and he's trying to tell this word is the truth. I'm going to mess with you right here. How many of you believe that the word of God can see to it that the water in Flint is clean? Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yeah, but we got to do some political. Why don't we just do the word? Amen. Because the word is truth. Amen. And when we teach people to do the word, God's word causes his will to come to pass. And it's not God's will for little children to die. Amen. Some people think so. Some people, some people may, I haven't heard it, probably hope I don't. Something, well, God made the water uh, bad so those people could get sick so we can change the government. <laughs> or we can, we can impeach him or whatever. I said I haven't heard it. But people talk that kind of crazy talk. That it was God that brought the sickness. Listen to me. Ain't no sickness in God. Amen. Oh, that, I need a big, real amen. big amen. Right amen. Ain't no did she sing Ain't No Way? Ain't No Way. Did she sing Ain't No Way? Yeah, well, ain't no, ain't no sickness in God. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to drill a truth in right here. Anytime anybody says anything to the effect that God brought or caused or used Sickness, they lie. Straight up. Amen. Because, and I did, I did, I did Deuteronomy 28 the other week. Talk about the blessings Amen. on this side, the curses are on that side. Sickness is nowhere listed in the blessing. Hmm? Okay, we're gonna do some more of that later on. Okay. Let's go, let's go up to verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, 
it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Um, this, the, I declare that there is a new attitude around Salvation Temple Church. The attitude is that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. So you can bring them if you want to. Bring them. We're going to lay hands on them. Amen. And they will, shall recover. Amen. Amen. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, verse 20, and preached everywhere. The Lord working how? With them and doing what? And confirming the word. With signs following. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We preach the word of God. We just read the word of God right here. Mm -hmm. And God confirms his word yeah. with mm -hmm. signs following. Yeah. Here's my teaching point and we're wrapping up and getting out of here. Teaching point. To know, receive, believe, and do God's word is the main key to healing. Um, uh, part of when, when I was researching information about this lesson, part of one of the thoughts that was running through my head was about the school of prophets that they talked about in the Old Testament area over there. I haven't found a collection of the verse yet where that specifically is. But when I, when I, when I was considering about that, and I was noticing there was a place where uh, one of the uh, one of the men of God, I think he took maybe a hundred prophets and hid them somewhere away from Jezebel because she was threatening to kill him. Or somebody was threatening to kill all these prophets, and this man of God hid them <laughs> so that they, that they wouldn't get get harmed. And, I, and then I, I was thinking, wow, why did they need a hundred prophets? Have you heard any of the prophets these days? Can you imagine if there was a hundred of them around, all in one place at one time? It'd be a virtual mess. Mm -hmm. But then I said, when we think about school, because they had a school of prophets, to teach prophets how to profit. <laughs> uh, not that lost. Oh, statements. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, prophetize. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they have a school for prophets, we have a school for healing. Yeah. A school for healing. Yeah. Well, who are these people, Pastor? Y'all? Mm -hmm. You is. That's right. <laughs> Amen. In the school for healing. We need healers. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The healers will be those that lay hands on the sick. Yeah. And when the healers lay hands on the sick, what's going to happen to the sick? Recover. They Recover. shall Recover. recover. Hold up your hand. Say out loud, these are hands of the healer. These are hands of the healer. And when I lay them on the sick, they shall recover. They shall recover. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So here's my action point. Uh, we, we call this class, you know, healing, school for healing. And I just wanted you to know up front, how many of y'all want to enroll in the school? Maybe you enroll in this school. You enroll because you're here. And I want you to know you already have an A. That's my teaching style. Come in class first of all year. Hey, everybody got an A. Mm -hmm. And then back in the teaching days, I would say, and let's see how it ends up at the end of the course. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you got your A when? No, when did you get your A? Look, look, look up. You got your A. Come on. In the school for healing, mm -hmm. two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. for one, for you to be healed, mm -hmm. and number two, 
for you to be a healer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Healed and being a healer. Amen. So say out loud, I am healed. I am healed. I am free. I am free. Because I believe. Because I believe. And then say, I am now a healer. I am now a healer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time. When I lay hands on the sick, when I lay hands on the sick they shall recover. They shall recover. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So here's my assignment. Here's my request. Here's my uh, asking you. Come to class, please. How many of y'all got kids that didn't go to class sometimes? Huh? You got kids that didn't go to class. How many of you, when you were a kid, you didn't go to class? Get to class. You found somewhere to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the deal is, you need to come to class. Then when you get here, you need to receive the lessons. And then, what do we do after that? Do the homework. And when you do that, you will be healed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, the last thing, I'm done with my paper. Um, uh, my wife said to me, the things, one of the things she notices about me is that I have a tendency to uh, do a lot of talking, trying to explain to other people with a whole bunch of words so that they can understand what I want them to understand. Instead of letting them just understand what they want to understand and me do what I do, because when I do what I do and they interact with that, they're going to understand it, because understanding happens. Amen. And, and if they don't understand, so we'll have some conversation and it'll clear up and we'll be on the same page and we'll be able to go forward. The drive for me for School for Healing and Salvation Temple Church is to believe in some way that I want to give you lessons. I want to give you words from God's word to the extent that as you receive those words, those words are going to drive doubt out of your life. Those words and lessons from God's word will bring you to the place where you receive that word and say, I've been up to be prayed for. I've taken all kinds of medicine. I've gone to this place. I've gone to that place. And I'm still not sound and whole. But I will continue to believe God's word. Mm -hmm. And when you continue to believe God's word, if it, listen, and don't use this as an excuse. If it takes weeks, so what? Right. If it takes months, so what? Yeah. Even if it takes years, so what? Yeah. Healing, soundness, being healed yeah. is healing, soundness, being healed. Yeah. And that's what God wants for us. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me just stand up on your feet if you will. And uh, there's this song from a long time ago called Rise and Be Healed. And remember, we're starting a new aspect here. We started it last week here at Salvation Temple Church. That after uh, we, at the close part of this sermon, I'm going to have our, our designated healing ministers. They're going to come and stand down front here. And when they come, if you've got a situation that you want them to pray for you, and believe God together with you for healing to come to pass in whatever that situation is, I want you to come down here and communicate with them, and they will pray with you. They will believe with you, and God's healing power will come to pass in your life, Amen. in whatever area that's going on in Jesus' name. And then let me close out this prayer. This, this, uh, this lesson with this prayer and to call your attention to the gospel, which is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. 
This is God's word. This is the truth of God. And when you receive it and believe it, you have what it is that God said for you to have. So let's look at the words of this. This verse is up on the screen. The Gospel in John chapter 3, verse number 16. Let's read those words out, together, out loud together. Ready? Read. For, for God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that includes you as well. Amen. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. 10, 11, up through 13, and many other verses throughout the scripture. But think like this. I just talked to you. I said salvation is found. But what else is found? Say healing, healing prosperity, 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 joy, joy peace, peace. All of that is found in God's word. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Let's read that one verse together. Those words are on that screen. Read it out loud. Ready? Read. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Heal. Heal. Prosperity. Prosperity. Joy. Joy. Peace. In the Holy Ghost. All of those things. <laughs> They all happen yeah. at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So let's pray this prayer together. Say this out loud. God in heaven, God in heaven. Thank, you today. thank you for today. I believe, I believe that your word, that your word is, the is the truth. I receive, I receive the, gospel. the gospel. I receive, I receive salvation, 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 healing, healing prosperity, prosperity, all of the graces of this God, our salvation. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son Jesus. And I thank you today. I declare. I declare. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for those of you watching, uh, for looking and share this on your page, if you will, again. Others may have opportunity to see this. Check out our website, stc.church. There's information how to get connected with us on our other social media sites and more information about salvation. And we pray you be blessed in Jesus' name today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.